I already have a video on Isaiah 9-6, but it's quite old and doesn't focus on the oneness misuse of the word Father in this verse, like the following video does. Isaiah 9-6 says in the King James Version, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This is the only verse in the whole Bible that calls the Messiah a Father. The modalist or oneness Pentecostal will argue that Christ is called both a father and a son, as well as God and child born, and this therefore proves that Christ is the father in his deity and the son in his humanity, or is God the father manifest in the flesh as the son. But the first significant point to mention is that the fact that both Trinitarians and Oneness Pentecostals would agree that the specific revelation of the Father-Son relationship didn't yet exist at the time the book of Isaiah was written. In other words, we can't assume the word Father in this verse means Father of Christ, God the Father, or the Trinitarian title, the Father. Trinitarian scholars believe in what is called progressive revelation, which means the Lord chose to reveal certain doctrines in His perfect timing over history rather than revealing everything at a single moment. For example, justification by faith alone and the Trinity were hinted in the Old Testament, but were more clearly and fully revealed after the Old Testament. The Trinity wasn't yet explicitly revealed when Isaiah 9-6 was written, and Oneness Pentecostals would agree that the Father-Son relationship was still unknown. So assuming the term Father in Isaiah 9-6 means God the Father, is illogical yet to be proven, and in fact impossible to prove. This simple fact already casts huge doubt on the oneness interpretation of Isaiah 9-6. Jesus is called a Father, but it's too quick, even dangerous, to assume that this therefore means he's the Father of the Son. Abraham is also called a father throughout the Old and New Testaments. We all know that it's silly to assume he's God the Father incarnate. Abraham is also called father in the very same book, Isaiah 51 verse 2, and it's just as silly to assume Christ is God the Father manifest in the flesh because of one Old Testament verse. If the apostles really regarded Jesus as the father, they could have taken a second to call him father once or twice anywhere in the New Testament, but they never do. So what does the title Everlasting Father really mean? How do Trinitarian exegetes view this title? The two main views are, number one, Father is synonymous with founder, author, or creator, Isaiah 64, 8. Number two, the kingly Messiah, the man Christ Jesus, as the kingly Messiah is a father to his beloved people, Psalm 103, 13. Some even interpret it as proving Jesus is the father of the new covenant or the source of eternal life. Let's start with number one. The Darby Bible and the Young's Literal Translation render the Hebrew as Father of Eternity instead. The Amplified Bible also supports this. The word Father can simply mean Founder or Creator, Malachi 2.10. If the Son is actually the Father or Founder of Eternity itself, He would have to be the Eternal Son. Satan is the Father of Lies, which means He's supremely a liar. The Son of God is the Father of Eternity, which means He's supremely eternal. The Creator of history even of all things, Colossians 1.16. I've also heard oneness apologists claim and admit that the Hebrew reads Father of Eternity, for example, Gordon McGee. In other words, the verse doesn't say Jesus is the Father of the Son, but rather the Father of something else, the Father of Eternity, or the Ages. Oneness Pentecostals also like to emphasize that the Messiah is called the Everlasting Father, claiming that only God the Father is the Everlasting Father, and there are no other Everlasting Fathers. But the definite article, that is, the, is not found in the original Hebrew, and God the Father is never called Everlasting Father anywhere in the Bible, so that point is invalid. The 1599 Geneva Bible's footnote on Isaiah 9-6 reads, The author of eternity, and by whom the church and every member thereof shall be preserved forever and have immortal life. The scholars who form the Geneva Bible agree with this interpretation. 
A oneness, in, a oneness Pentecostal may also try to make a connection between Isaiah 9.6 and Isaiah 63.16 because it uses the word Father and everlasting for Jehovah in the King James Version. But the two Hebrew words for everlasting are different between the verses, which is why the NASB says, From of old is your name. This is not, not a legitimate parallel, but a creation that only exists in an English translation rather than the original language. Let's look at the second Trinitarian interpretation. Does everlasting father simply mean the Messiah will act as a fatherly king and treat his people as a father should? We all know that the best kings should treat their subjects as their own beloved children, to be a father to their people, to provide and protect their people. For example, Psalm 68 verse 5 says, Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. And Psalm 103.13 says, Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Even the fatherly discipline Jehovah has in Proverbs 3.12 is applied to Christ in Revelation 3.19, but he's not called father. Jesus acts as a perfect father. He has compassion on his people, provides for his people, and comforts and disciplines his people. Of course, he also forgives his people. And of course, he created everything. That makes him the father or originator of everything. I have no problem calling Jesus a father, but not the father. There is no Bible verse that does, nor is there any Bible verse that proves that Jesus is actually the father of the son. Proving Jesus is a father doesn't prove he's God the father. In fact, all of the titles in Isaiah 9-6 are likely messianic titles describing the perfect Messiah or King. As the Wonderful Counselor, the coming Messiah will be supremely wise, always executing justice. Compare chapter 11 verse 2 about Christ. As Mighty God, he will be a divine mighty warrior or hero who protect, protects and fights for his people. Verses 4 to 5. As Prince of Peace, he will, his government will bring about peace to the nations. As Everlasting Father, the Messiah will be an enduring fatherly king to his people, establishing his kingdom with them forevermore. Verse 7. I encourage people to read verse 7. The, NS, uh, the ESV Study Bible comments on the title, Everlasting Father. It says, A father here is a benevolent protector. Compare Isaiah 22:21, Job 29:16, which is the task of the ideal king, and is also the way God himself cares for his people. Compare Isaiah 63:16, 64:8, Psalm 103:13. That is, this is not using the Trinitarian title Father for the Messiah. Rather, it is portraying him as a king. This seems to be the most meaningful and natural way to read the verse. It uses several messianic titles to describe the ideal king. This verse would be extra significant in favor of oneness if the New Testament writers quoted it, applying it to Jesus and using it to call him Father, but they never do. The New Testament writers are always careful to distinguish between the person of the Father and the person of Jesus. He's called the Son of the Father in 2 John verse 3, and the Word who was God and became flesh was the only Son from the Father, John 1.14. The Logos is identified as the Son in John 1.14, not the Father. The New Testament never calls Jesus Father, not even once. Conclusion: The oneness interpretation of Isaiah 9.6 is a big stretch which exaggerates and misuses the simple word Father. They actually read their own meaning of the word Father into the verse to aid their own doctrines and presuppositions. Both common Trinitarian interpretations of the phrase everlasting father have merit and are more meaningful. Jesus the Messiah is father of eternity or the kingly father to his beloved people. Isaiah 9.6 simply doesn't say he's the father of the son, God the father in the son, or the father of himself in a different form, nor is there any Bible verse that does. Having addressed Isaiah 9.6 and other favorite oneness passages and other videos. My challenge to all oneness believers is to find me a specific passage or context that proves absolutely that Christ is God the Father in human form or existed as God the Father before the Incarnation or the name of the Father is Jesus. 
Are these biblical teachings founded on scripture or man-made teachings based upon a flawed human understanding of how God exists in order to make him easier to understand? The idea that one divine person manifests himself in different modes, offices, or roles in relationship to creation and humanity is too easy to understand or comprehend that it must be man-made. And I can use many verses to prove Jesus Christ existed as the Son before the Incarnation. Let us seek the truth and search the scriptures. I truly believe in my heart that there exists no biblical basis at all for the idea that Jesus Christ is the Father. He is the Son of the Father, was with and from the Father, is the way to the Father, reveals the Father, is loved by the Father, sent by the Father. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are personally and eternally distinct. God bless and thank you for watching.